ever said in my life. It was a delicious mix between dark and unsuitable for YouTube and inappropriate for children and all of that. And it turned out I didn't record any of it because my microphone was muted. So we are back in again, redoing the dialogue for ancient motor oil. So for this one, I just was looking at images online until I found a jug that tickled my fancy. And by tickled my fancy, I mean tickled me in a way that was like both difficult and uh, undesirable. You know, that's how you know you, you chose a good jug. You know, you want to choose a jug that really challenges you and maybe even requires you be mentally challenged to even attempt it. In fact, the more I look at the reference, the more I see things in it. And so this is a post narration. So you're basically watching me, mo you're watching me watch me model it. And then I'm just talking about it. In fact, I'm not even gonna talk about what I'm doing, but I will say that um, for this video, I will upload the original uh, for patrons. And from there, um, the viewers will just get this video because you know the dialogue is always something I, I worry about you know I don't want to um, get too dark in videos but I just can't help it because the world is just the way it is now so topics are the topics and there's no denying that but also you know I can't uh, censor myself um, but I can definitely look at things on a, a quality assurance level and think, huh, that doesn't fit the quality that I want for my channel. So we are just going to get in here and model this again. And this time I'm going to use clean dialogue. Just kidding. I'm not. I'm, I'm already fucking up. So with that, let us get in here and just deal with this jug. So the jug is basically cut out of a block and then we're just adding loops and just playing with topology while we get this thing together. You know, for me, it's all about setting up the most important loops that will kind of set the rules of the entire shape and then kind of uh, going forward with those. So you see me just kind of trying to set up just some, um, I don't even know what's the right word, trying to set up some landmarks. And these landmarks will tell me everything I can know about the shape and will guide me through its uh, creation. But you know, there, it will go through quite a few changes because, you know, it's been a while since I've done a jug. Uh, during the testing process, one of the testers asked that I do a jug just to show um, kind of what Insolve offers in relation with jugs. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll come back for that because really um, I want the users to be the ones exploring and finding out all the different things you can be doing with the tools. If I show them everything, then I will basically be dictating, here's how you use the tool, now and forever, and then I'll be getting endless emails about that. So, in a way, I kind of want to be vague. Right there, I drew a shape and I pressed R and it rotated on the wrong axis. And it's not a big deal, but to me, it is a big deal. Why did you choose the wrong axis? Why didn't you choose the view-based axis? And these are the questions I ask because, you know, with box cutter, the rules are slightly different. With box cutter, the rules are, if you press R, it just does. It just does, and then the next thing is, can you have it do exactly what I want? And that answer is often no. But the first one is, can you have it do? And can it just do? So I'm just scrolling, adding them in the stack a certain way. And we see that this one was not added the right way. And that's because I had a bisect modifier. If I'm working on it in a bisect fashion, then the results can be a little wonky. But you see that adding another mirror will make it a lot more predictable. So we have a mirror and then a mirror. So the first mirror is to deal with its bisect nature. The second mirror is to just allow me to mirror as if the mesh is manifold. So it's just something I've always done. Um, I don't think there's any reason to explain it. If you do need explanation, there's a video called Mirror Business, uh, super old, but it explains my mirror business or my business with mirror in a way that I think is clear and concise. A uh, thing I'll do a lot when I'm working is I will just um, duplicate and hide an object just so I have a state of it being a certain way before I move on to it being the next way. And we're just adding in more shapes as we're just uh, refining the form. You know, jugs are such a fun thing to explore just because, you know, the criteria for success is in the image. And the image itself, while being a um, criteria checkbox system, of what you must do is also a mystery box of itself because I look at the image and I'm like, what are these shapes? What are these shapes and how do they connect to each other? But that is one of the things that I find joy in when it comes to modeling. I find joy in being puzzled by shapes. Like uh, just know that I'm never looking at a shape being puzzled and I'm mad. 
unless it's Anthony Jones. Uh, that's another story. But if um, we're just looking at a shape and the shape is just a puzzle, I'm having a good time figuring it out because, you know, when, when the shape is that vague, who's right and who's wrong? Well, I mean, if it's a photo, then I'm obviously wrong. But if it's a uh, concept, then, hey, I might be right. You know, I'm the guy making it in 3D, especially if it's based off of a 2D concept. So being able to have that skill of um, 2D to 3D is just important. It's just important for a myriad of reasons. Even though I see that these things are uh, being devalued over time, I still feel that they are just as essential as they've always been. So if you're wondering about how to get ahead or how to be useful or how to even survive or how to have a path forward, just know that um, being able to adhere to concepts is still a very classic and desirable skill. And more than likely, if you are offered a job, you will be given a bunch of concepts and told to adhere to them. Chances are they'll probably give you some bunch of dribble made by AI and they're going to be like, hey, make this and that will be your job. So just be used to that. In fact, right now we're dealing with just uh, photographs found on the internet, but you know, I do also spend a little bit of time trying to study AI images and get better at following them as well, even though AI images are, uh, what's the right word, retarded. They're, they're retarded, definitely retarded. You'll start following it and then you're like, wait, wait, who, what, how, computer? The computer's like, yeah, hey, you just asked me for an image. I, I don't know what I did here. I just made it up. And I find that to be a very important skill. Like, um, you know, we make fun of it as humans, but to be able to make stuff up, to fill in the blanks is a skill that I, I would take from AI. Like, if I could learn from that, to just confidently fill in a hole with nonsense, I would be most grateful. I would consider myself quite talented. But these are, these are skills that, um, you know, AI excels at, even though um, it trivializes us. And we're just doing a little bit of ge geometric connections. You know, now that we got the form in there, it's real easy for us to just set things up and lay down exactly what we want to do because for the most part, this shape is just us solving a few topological puzzles between other shapes that are trying to coalesce together. So I know that sounds a little complicated, but when in doubt, for something like this, reduction is where it's at. So you'll see me use that as a weapon a lot. Like every now and then I'll come into a situation that I can't control and as a result, I will just reduce it. For example, right here, a little bit of reduction and we are good to go. Reduction, reduction, it's a lot simpler. And you'll see me add, subtract, reduce, reuse, recycle. Not to quote the old uh, recycling ads from the 90s, but a, if it works, it works. And why change it if it never worked, ever? And on that note, I say that I see so many people littering, and it's just terrible. I hate littering so bad. You know, they're, they're like the worst people on earth. Like, the people who just throw their trash directly on the ground. I just can't even express it. Like, <laughs> when people do it in front of me, it is like, I'd rather you, I'd rather you beat your spouse or your kids, or murder them, then throw garbage on the ground. First of all, the earth? You have issues with the earth? The earth has never done nothing to us. You know, I'm convinced that God is the trees, but it can't be because we've wrote a book a long time ago out of a tree saying that God is made of man and that man is God, which sounds a bit like hubris, but trees, trees are so valuable. We must all love them, you know. I don't even want to see people abusing trees. You know, I'm a tree lover, not like a hippie or anything. Right there, I extruded that all the way to the center and just dissolved it. I do love that little trick. It's just a just a weird little Blender-ism. And a lot of the things I love the most about Blender are these uh, kind of Blender-isms. Just little random things that just work out for me uh, because of Blender. And these are definitely the reasons why you should switch over to Blender if you're thinking about it. Because Blender has so many great things, like very great things. Like for example, being able to uh, copy and paste on the right side of a rig. I don't know if Maya ever got it, but they sure didn't have it when I was there. And I remember talking about it all the time and just no one knew what I was talking about. They didn't take me seriously, but I had to use Maya against my will. And Maya did not have copy and paste 
from the left side of the rig to the right side of the rig. So you would be often reusing a pose the hard way, you know, via, I almost want to say the word quaternion rotation, but I, I feel like I'm mispronouncing something there. But Blender just has it going on. You know, it's all these very small blender isms that I feel really makes it pan out. Like, for example, um, Exact can be a bit of a bastard man when it comes to dealing with it. But because we have Exact and Fast as Boolean systems, it just makes Blender so much more powerful. And then I just imagine that someday both of them will be replaced with a new system altogether that has just some cool singular buzzword that just does the job. But for now, Fast and Exact, having them both is just fantastic. In fact, uh, we've had them for years now. Um, you know, I always thought Fast was going to go away or Exact would take over and become the thing that finally killed Blender by making Boolean so slow that they were unbearable and no longer a good modeling choice uh, non-destructively, but we still have both. And for that, shout out to my boy Howard. All right. Shout out to Howard for keeping it great. Keeping it great. Because it's hard. It is hard. Blender is so quick to just get something out of here. Just get rid of it. And luckily, the Boolean system has maintained a degree of stability that has resulted in the tools um, being able to flourish. And I think about that all the time. You know, every time I do a Boolean, my first thought is, thank you, Howard. And my next thought is, dang you, Howard. No, I'm playing. But I do think a lot about some of the improvements that could be had with Blender and it does make me uh, optimistic for the future, even though, you know, uh, we're, we're talking about like maybe 10 years in the future or something. It's going to take like some, some crazy revolutions. But, you know, one day, and, you know, people always comment to me, they're like, yo, nerves. I'm like, nerves? They're like, yeah, nerves. I'm like, no, no, not Blender. No. Tan would need to be visited by the three ghosts of like CAD modeling past. And Ton has no CAD modeling pass, so he would just shun those ghosts. He'd be like, terrorists! Um, and just wave them away. So, really, who knows what it will take to get Blender? Being a little more CAD like, but really, it's not even a concern to me because modeling is modeling, it's timeless. Um, I've seen so many things made with modeling that, you know, I never am doubtful that there's a way to accomplish what I need to do just through some good old modeling. You know, I don't need to completely redefine my entire discipline but you know the tool belt is always something worth expanding to you know best tool for the job always be adding new tools to your tool belt but never forget where your home application is and my home application is blender you know blender is where i throw my hat up at the end of the day it's where i load all my models is where i do all my rendering so i consider it my home application so here we're just checking out this jug. We're really getting somewhere, even though that area is a little bit messy. But, you know, we start throwing over a few little spare loops. And it becomes a lot more controllable. So the more that you lay down in the form, the easier the things are. In fact, I apologize for the quality of this dialogue. This dialogue is probably the most, the least spirited of all the dialogue offerings for this particular video, just because... I recorded one a second ago that had a few good jokes in there and now I'm seeing that that video was wasted. I should have noticed that the audio bar wasn't moving. I should have been more um, aware of what audio source was offering the audio, but these are just some of the mishaps that happen to me whenever I'm modeling. Like sometimes I will uh, pause a video to talk to someone and then I'll start yelling at that person and I will be yelling at them so long, I will forget that my video was muted and I'll go back to modeling and I forget that I was even uh, doing that to begin with. And, or I was recording something to begin with, so I'll forget to unpause. And then by the time I do unpause, it's like jumped ahead. It's like that video is completely ruined. So the case in point is just, I get distracted a lot. I get distracted by all sorts of things. You know what distracts me the most is support issues. You know, the moment that someone writes me and they're like, hey, I has problem, you know, that actually stops all of reality because, you know, customer problems must be resolved. It must be resolved fast. That's what it means to provide grade A support. It means that you must drop your fork, you must drop your spoon, you must drop your steam deck to basically respond to a customer issue. In fact, if I look at my watch and my watch vibrates because of a uh, customer query, 
I'm back on the clock and work must continue. So just a little insight into my life and what premium support actually means. But just know that if the question is um, presented the wrong way or rude or any of that, uh, of course those rules are all bypassed out. You know, these, these calls time um, delays to be added. You know, if I look at the message and the message is very rude, yeah, I'll probably, um, I'll get to you tomorrow. You know, no time for that. You know, it's a very small field. It's a very, um, there's only one person in your point of contact. So if you're rude to him, uh, yeah, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you at a later time. But most people usually are just like, hello, I has problem. And I'm like, okay, check the details. And of course, always the best customers are the ones who are like, yo, this is my bug. This is how I got it. You know, the best, best, best people are like, yo, this is my bug. This is how I got it. Here's a crash report. Here's a bug report. And, you know, that's it. And, you know, they'll give me any additional information. And the more information you give me, the faster that bug will be annihilated. I'm telling you, like, some information, like, once it's given, I just show it to them. They're like, okay, no, I, it's dead. It's dead. I've killed it right now while you've been talking to me. I'm like, wow, good. Make sure it's dead. Stays dead, is dead. You know, bugs, born to be killed. So on that note, a update for Insolve is out, improving stability for offset and so forth. You know, uh, it's crazy to see when people are having issues inside of Insolve because Insolve is supposed to be the most stable part, but everybody's writing back and they're like, hey, I'm having um, the most stability in Inflow and I'm having all the issues in Insolve. And I'm like, Insolve, that's how you break my heart. You tell me that you're having problems in Insolve because Insolve is named Insolve because Insolve's supposed to be the most stable part. And yet people run into it and they run into issues. I'm like, how does this happen? It's based off a concept that is so old, but it's because it was remade. It was remade. You're dealing with the remake and the remake Mm. it's got a ways to go you know remakes are a strange thing I'm not going to sit here and disparage remakes but just know that you know remakes rarely uh, replace the original if anything they can uh, get people interested in the original but rarely do they uh, exceed it so much that uh, there's Judge Dredd there's, there's actually a couple of remakes that I love I mean in the movie realm of course there's a lot of them but in video games mm, not so much. Like I was just ranting in a very long comment yesterday about how in Resident Evil 4, they now let you um, get a score even if you die. I'm like, this is the peak of modern gaming and what's wrong with it. You know, why would you give someone a score if they die? Imagine if you were killing zombies with a gang of people and you died and at the end they're like, wow, so-and-so might be dead, but they sure killed a whole lot of zombies. Just wouldn't make any sense. You know, basically they're dead. They died. They died killing zombies and as a result, uh, they're done and we had to basically kill them because they were a zombie, you know, because they got eaten by zombies is just what happened. So just to get a uh, participation prize in a video game for failing, it's just, it's just very insane. It was just a very insane choice on the remake. Uh, it really made it appear like it wasn't a game made for people who were good at the game. It made it look like a game that was for children. And I mean, children can't play the game. The game's too realistic. You're in there blowing people up and eviscerating them you know the game as i play resident Evil 4 now i'm like dang these graphics are kind of throwed uh no wonder all the games look like fortnite now you know you start making them look grisly and violent and they look scary uh i could have been playing this game when i was a kid it would have screwed me up realistic zombies they look like people i know anyways back to this jug so with this we are now at the end we recorded this dialogue for the third time no biggie but drove me a little crazy so now we set up the camera and we just admire it and really this video was just for me to just kind of get in and do a jug and just kind of show the process and have fun with topology but we will wrap this video and i thank everyone for watching and i'll see you guys next time